Hi everyone, today is Monday, October the 25th, 2021, and this is Dr. Wes Fryer. I'm here in my 5th and 6th grade media literacy classroom at Cassidy School, and uh, today I'm going to just record part of our lesson, maybe the whole lesson. Uh, this is day three, well, it's more than that, but it's the third part, probably about day five, of a multi-part unit on what I call Fruit Loop Conspiracy Theories. Um, we are still under a mask mandate, so when I have kids in my room, I have to wear my mask, so I'm going to record with a Bluetooth speaker, and hopefully this is going to be uh, intelligible and valuable, but um, I would encourage you, and I'll include in the show notes to, or the link, the uh, description of this video, uh, to check out the full unit, but um, I'm teaching the SIFT Web Literacy Framework to students, and we're talking about how we need to uh, when we encounter information that we don't, you know, know uh, whether or not to believe, we want to have a critical mind, be able to stop, investigate the source. Um, we want to be able to find trusted coverage. Uh, that's the F of SIFT, and we want to trace things to the original. And today, uh, we're only going to be focusing on uh, the stop and the and the focus on investigating the source. And so, anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, check out the full lesson, and uh, hopefully, this will be helpful. Uh, if you happen to be wanting to see some things about my teaching style and my teaching, um, I'll just I will say one more thing about this. This is part of a bigger project called Conspiracies and Culture Wars that I've been working on for a couple years with my colleague Brian Turnbaugh in Chicago. It is challenging to take some of these issues, especially around conspiracy, and make them developmentally appropriate for middle schoolers. So if the developmental level of my students was higher, we were in high school, we were teaching college, we'd certainly be taking this to some greater levels of depth. Uh, but this is my second year to be teaching this. I, I teach this as a trimester course. So this is actually my fourth iteration to be teaching this. And I'm hopeful to be publishing an article about this uh, later, later this academic year. I just think it's so important to be addressing web literacy and the issue of conspiracy theory is, is really big. So students have actually watched Prior to this, a couple videos that we've sketch noted and we've discussed, and they've created some narrated sketch notes about. They're going to be sketch noting today. I'm going to be sketch noting, um, and then they're going to be using a script to reflect on the on the process. All right, here we go. Okay. All right, let's get started. Good morning, class. Good morning, Dr. Pryor. Oh, come on, we can do that better than that. Good morning, class. Good morning, all right, as I said, uh, Jackson, please find your seat. Uh, we are recording this lesson um, in part because I, I really like this lesson a lot, and I think that what we're having conversations about, conspiracies, web literacy, how do we decide who to believe, we're sketch noting, um, we're, we're narrating our sketch notes, we're doing a lot of good stuff, um, but this is really as an example of the lesson, and like I said, things that we say are going to be recorded, it'll be on YouTube, um, so just, you know, that shouldn't change anything that we're doing, but I want to let you know about that. Okay, so the plan today is we're going to see a video, believe it or not, by someone who actually thinks we landed on the moon. Okay? I know, it's going to rock some people's worlds. Maybe if J.P. Sears was here, he would be shocked. But um, what I want to actually, so we're going to watch that. We're going to watch half of it, okay? This is a longer video, it's like 13 minutes, and so I'm going to be sketch noting up here. If you don't have your stylus today, I want to encourage you to just have scratch pieces of paper, and you can borrow a pen or a pencil, but we're making a sketch note about the first half, and then next time we're going to do the rest of it, and then you're going to narrate it, okay? You all did a great job on your scripts, and if we have time today um, in Google Classroom, uh, who, uh, Reese, can you go grab the football real quick out of the, um, my office? Who remembers why we're using this football to talk the about lateral, lateral what? Mac, what is it? Lateral what? Oh, I had a question. You had a question. Who, who said lateral reading? Isha, what's lateral reading? Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Well, let's go back to lateral. Here, Reese, throw me a lateral. What, what makes this a lateral if she's not a forward pass? Forward pass, forward pass does what, Mac? It, cro it crosses, what's that line that divides offense and defense? The line of scrimmage, okay. So, but also, you can actually be past the line of scrimmage and still lateral. Lateral has to be, in football, either to what? It cannot be a forward pass. Okay, so you're going to the side or you're going back, right? That makes the lateral. Yep. Uh, then you can't, I think you can pass it forward. Yep. But you can't. 
Well, you have to be, the forward pass rate, is de you, you can't make a forward pass uh, beyond the line of scrimmage. And, and only an eligible receiver can get it. And anyway, there's more rules about it. But uh, we're talking about lateral reading. So Ben, Mohammed, London, Katie, does anybody remember when we say lateral reading, we did this with J.P. Sears. How did we do that? What did we do, London? We looked at Wikipedia. We actually did. We looked at Wikipedia as a source. We looked at a different source. That's why it was lateral, right? Because if we just listen to J.P. Sears talk about himself, that's okay. But why is that not necessarily the only thing we want to do? Is to hear. Well, he is a comedian. That's true. What else? When somebody talks, London? Unreliable? Well, it might be. It's certainly going to be biased, right? I mean, if you're talking about yourself, you're you're talking about you know your own opinions about yourself. So we're checking out other other um, opinions. Um, let me first, just really quickly, compliment you guys on the job that you did on your sketch notes. No, no, um, no, no. I'm not going to play these, okay? Um, but here's Ishul's. Um, you can see a lot more color going in here. This is Jackson's. Also, Jackson, like several of you used more than one page. Jackson, did you do this in Squid or? Squid, yeah, okay. So um, you can see how much the additional color, we've looked at Katie several times. Uh, this is Max, and this is Mohammed's. So again, do you have to make this look amazing? No. no. The key is you want to be able to look at your drawings and what, Reese? What you, what's the goal when you make your sketch notes? Or some of the key details, right? Not everything, not everything. But definitely remember some of the key details. And you can see, even just with a little bit of color, that improves things a little bit. Okay, so uh, what I want to encourage you, and if, if, by the way, and this happened with um, Sheru, and this happened with a couple other people, if you lose your sketch note at some point, uh, you can use a slide. This is what Ben did, which was fine, and Braylon did that as well. But hopefully, you guys are going to be able to keep your sketch notes, and that will... Um, that will work. Okay, what I'd like you to do is please open up Google Classroom, um, and I want you to open up the new assignment, which is called SIFT 3, and at the bottom, you're going to see a slideshow and also a few videos, okay? First of all, we could just jump to the end. If you click on script here, this is the script you're going to be filling in, which is a little bit shorter than the one we did for the last one, okay? But you're still going to be talking about ideas from your sketch note. We're going to investigate the source, okay, for this guy whose name is S.G. Collins. And then we're going to compare him to Sears. Max? Uh, so are we watching half of the 30-minute video? We're going to watch half of the 30-minute video. We're going to watch about a seven-minute video today, okay? We might watch a little bit of another, because I'm using this View Pure site just to take off the related videos and comments and stuff. Um, and it's unfortunate you can't tell the name of it. But one of these is to the video we're watching today. The other one is about... Um, the author who's called S.G. Collins. Okay, so um, if you want, right now, you have two choices. You can open up the slideshow that I'm about to show you, and you can follow along, or if you want to start on your sketch note, you can. What do we need to have at the top of our sketch note, Mohammed? What's one of the things? The title. The title, okay. And so today, I'm calling mine Moon Hoax Not, because that's the name of the video. You can call it something else, but no, this is a filmmaker who is going to talk about how we didn't have the technology in 1969 to fake the moon landing. He's going to talk about a bunch of technical things, okay? If you want to put his name, it's S.G. Collins. And then, uh, Warren, what else do we need besides the title? What else do we want? always want on every sketch note? Our name, okay? So you're going to put first or last, first and last, or just first? Just first. Just first. We're practicing that for safety. And then, Sheru, what else do we need besides our title and our name? The date. Okay, what is today? The 25th of October. All right, so um, I'm going to just share a couple of these slides and talk about this, and then we're going to watch the video. This is a big question. You may not have ever been asked this before in, in school. I don't know, maybe you have. How do you decide what to believe? In fact, let me give you a chance to turn to your neighbor, and if you don't have a neighbor, you may move to talk to someone, okay, in a small group. Take about 60 seconds, and once you talk about this question, how do you decide what to believe? I'm not just talking about in school, I'm talking about in life. Okay, you have 60 seconds. Go, talk to somebody. Yep, find somebody to talk to.
Okay, and if you see somebody who doesn't have somebody to talk talk to, okay, go go grab them. Then go go grab somebody to talk to. Well, you, you compare the facts and you all six facts and like you like your good background. Okay. How would you go about checking? How would you go about checking? Go to like some people, like it's like the fan school thing, and ask like what he does. And Okay. So you're thinking about investigating the source. What sources would you are you going to believe, Warren? Okay. Um, and what makes a friend somebody that you will trust? Okay. So somebody who's more of an expert in that topic, maybe. All right. Go ahead and return to your seats, please. All right. Please take your seat. All right, I heard some really good things. In fact, I just heard Mohammed say a, a word that starts with R. What was that word, Mohammed? Reliable. I think. Did you say reliable? Yeah, reliable. Oh, that was Braylon. Braylon, say, tell me about this word reliable. What does that mean? Reliable is like you got say for instance you like something you like something that's equally or you can't decide. You've got to think, which is more reliable? Okay, but how, what is reliable going to give you? Reliable means what? If you're reliable, what are you for me as a, as a friend or a source? Um, it's good. You're positive. You got that. You know, it is positive and good. Isha, why is it good and positive to have a reliable source or a reliable uh, person? It, I forgot my thing. You forgot? Who can help? What does it mean to be reliable? Sure. Well, it makes sense, Jackson. Okay, factual evidence. Probably that it's true, it's trustworthy, it's believable. Okay, so we're just in sixth grade right now. Is anybody here a teenager yet? I don't think so. Is everybody like either 11 or 12? Basically. Okay. As you get further and further in life, I am convinced that this just continues to be an important question. Are there some adults that you believe today when they tell you stuff? Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. Who are some of those people? Teachers. Could it be teachers, Reese? Right? Your parents. Okay. Could be a, a pastor, a priest at church. It could be, you know, other adults in your life. Coaches, right? People that you trust. But you need to be, I, I think, always aware, right, that sometimes there are different perspectives on things, but there's actually also people out there trying to trick us trying to get us to think things, advertising, right? Always trying to get us to buy something. So this is important. Okay, categories of conspiracy theory. Has anybody heard that Elvis is still alive? Yes. And Michael Jackson. <laughs> and Michael Jackson. Actually, I don't think he is. I think they're both dead. But I'm saying that's out there, okay? Anybody know where Elvis lived? Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. It was a town called Memphis. Yep. And has anybody ever been to his place? Yeah, you did. Graceland. Oh, I don't know. My family lives Okay, so you might have heard of some of these things. Now, so conspiracy theories we've been talking about with about the moon landing, I think there's different categories, and maybe some of them are just kind of fun, um, and that might be one of them. Are there political conspiracy theories? Yes. There are, and we're actually not going deep into these, okay? But for instance, let's talk about COVID just for a minute. Have you heard any wild theories that people have about the vaccine? Who's gotten the vaccine, by the way? Has anybody gotten it yet? Chase was just telling me this morning he got it. He just got it this weekend. Okay. Has anybody heard anything? Mohammed, what'd you hear? What'd you hear? Microsoft says no microchipping things. Yep. Yeah. The Bill Gates is putting microchips into everybody so he can like track us all, and that's you know the theory. Okay. That's a conspiracy theory. Okay. So part of the reason we're talking about the moon landing is it's a little bit less controversial. Some of these things are very controversial. And let me make this very clear, okay? I am not here to tell you how you have to believe politically, okay? I'm not here to make you a Republican. I'm not here to make you a Democrat. I'm not here to make you a socialist or, uh, you know, some kind of anarchist. I mean, I'm not here to tell you this is how you believe politically. What I want to help you do is develop your critical thinking skills so that you can analyze and decide for yourself. Now, the truth is, and I think, Reese, maybe you guys, there were some people... Some of you guys were having a good conversation at lunch, of, like maybe last week or something, about 
politics and things. A lot of times, how do people uh, and their parents, you know, think? Reese, what, how does that sometimes work? Uh, so, like, whatever's happening to parents will always well, normally having kids. Yep. Like, for instance, um, for like Trump and Biden, Biden was um, like kind of against using oil and gas. So, do the parents do oil and gas and they're against Biden, then you're also against Biden. Right. Did you know what right. that will happen if right. there's no more oil and gas? Because, yeah, this is how you earn money and this is also just these your, your parents and your family. So, just as I'm not here to tell you that I want you to be this particular political party or whatever, I'm also not here to tell you I want you to go against your parents. Okay, this isn't the, I'm not I'm not trying to foment a revolution here. What I am trying to help you think of is that there are lots of different ideas out there, and today we have more than ever, and some of them are actually trying to specifically trick you or to get you to think things that are completely outlandish. That's why we call this Fruit Loop Conspiracy Theory. So we're not going deep into the political. All right, let's talk about old, because these are a little bit playful, and I'm going to jump out of here for a second to put in the words IMDB and National Treasure. Who has seen this 2004 movie, National Treasure? Anybody seen it? Really? Not that many? Okay, I'm going to play a little bit of the trailer. This is a Nicolas Cage movie. Benjamin Franklin Gates, you are undertaking the duty of the family Gates to find the most spectacular treasure in history. It grew throughout the ages and moved across continents until it was hidden by America's founding fathers who left clues to the treasure's location right before our eyes. The unfinished pyramid, we all see in our eyes. By telling us something, keeping this treasure safe, Benjamin, is your destiny. You're treasure hunters, aren't you? We're more like treasure protectors. All his life, Benjamin Gates has searched for a treasure no one believed existed. Don't you get it, Ben? The treasure is myth. Yeah, I refuse to believe that. But what he thought was the final clue... 109 years of searching, I'm three feet away. ...is only the beginning. The Declaration of Independence. You think there is a treasure map on the back of the Declaration of Independence? The map is invisible. Oh. Why would we make this up? Where's your proof? We don't have it. Marley, get down! Okay, for those of you that have seen this movie, is this a good? Is this a good movie? Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, it's a fun movie. And actually, this is one of the movies that really got our daughter, especially who's now a 12th grader here at Cassidy, excited about history and learning about the Declaration of Independence and some geography like Boston, Old North Church. We just went to Boston about a month ago to tour. Ooh, guess where? Yeah, Rachel and I did, and she went to MIT and Owen and Boston University. Ooh, guess where our, our, um, our Airbnb was on Saturday night? Right next to the Old North Church. What was big about holding up, like, what is it? One if I land, two if I see. Have you heard of this guy named Paul... Revere. Bunyan is different. Paul Revere. He was reporting on who, who was attacking in the Revolutionary War. The British. the British. The British are coming. The British are coming. So, like, there's all this history and these different kinds of connections. Um, but And that's why I say this is kind of playful as well. But some of the stuff this is about, like the Knights Templar. Have you ever heard of them before? They were a, they were a, a group of knights that protected people as they uh, the cru during the times of the Crusades and the Middle Ages and the Holy Land. You know they really existed. They were really a group. Uh, their treasure really you know did disappear. We don't know what happened to them. So there's a lot of theories that people will have, and this is a group called the Masons. And if you go to a lot of um, like downtown areas and you see the courthouse, a lot of people. We're Masons. And does anybody know what the G in the Masonic symbol stands for? Stands for God. Okay, it's a Christian group, and so, but it's kind of secretive, and so there's a lot of different things. And this stuff has been around for a long time. Reese. Um, the one movie you've been looking at is that the they put like lemon on the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, they do. Okay, then right. that, yes, I have yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, so, so right, because that, that is one way to do invisible ink is that if you have an acidic, but of course, what would that do to the Declaration of Independence if you really did it? Oh, it's right. Okay, I'm talking too much about this slide. Uh, 
because this is, a, I, lo- I mean, this stuff is really interesting to me. But in addition to playful, political, and old, have you guys heard of this guy, Shane Dawson, who had the conspiracy theory about um, Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah, that one. No, no, no. It was about them reusing pizza, reusing pizzas and all that stuff. And he invented that for likes, right? So I think that's a category. Um, are there contentious theories regarding climate change or UFOs and aliens? Yes. There are. There are. Okay. And then there's also what I would put in the category of real, okay? Where, where, what happened to the Nazi uh, scientists who were developing the V2 rocket for Hitler? They were Operation Paperclip, Ben. That's right. And that was the operation the United States had to bring them to the United States. But what was the other country that wanted to get them? These scientists that were very smart, that were developing rockets. What was the other country in the Cold War? Russia. That's right. The Soviet Union. The Soviet Union. It was the V2 rocket. Some people say if they had fully developed that, that could have you know, been a decisive thing for Hitler. It was just right at the end of the war. So there are things that have been secret that get uncovered. Oh, did that really happen? Yeah, we really did. Uh, Werner von Braun was the leader of our whole space program, um, and we brought a lot of Nazi scientists over. There's a lot of categories of conspiracy theories, okay? Why do people like conspiracy theories? These are some ideas. Malevolent means bad. In Spanish, what does mal mean? Bad, (laughs) okay? So a bad villain, think about a lot of stories that you've watched or read where there's a hero and there's what? You can't really have a hero without a... All right, think about um, the Avengers, okay? Who's the really, in in Infinity Wars, who's the real bad guy? Thanos. Thanos, okay? So you really couldn't have heroes without villains. And maybe some people, you know, I, I do, I enjoy stories, but having a clear villain... A simple story. Oh, this is bad. This is good. And maybe this is this is even reassuring. The world is complicated. There's a whole lot of change going on. And maybe conspiracy theories help people feel more comfortable. SIFT is what we've been talking about. And you're going to talk more about this in your reflection. We're talking a lot today about investigating the source. But we need to stop when we have information that we're not sure about so that we can investigate the source, find better coverage, and we can trace some of those things to their original context, where they came from. So uh, why do we want to stop? Why don't we just want to take J.P. Sears' video, Warren, and be like, oh, okay, good. I'm, I'm good now. I understand the Apollo program. Uh, we have to investigate the source. Okay, so you'll get tricked. There's things that are entertaining, right? National Treasure would be a good example of conspiracy theories, entertaining, playful, but like believing that these things are real and then making, you know, forming your opinions and decisions based on that, that can be problematic. All right, I talk too much. We've got to watch seven minutes of this video. So what I would like for you to do is, if you're not already, and I think everybody that I see is, um, get ready to draw. Um, I will pause this a couple times as well as at the end, and then we're going to review uh, what we each have put in here. Okay? Here we go. So, uh, would it have been impossible to take one? Did people go to the moon in 1969? I'm not totally sure. I wasn't on the moon then. Did they fake going to the moon? No, I'm pretty sure they didn't, because they couldn't. Some people say that in 1969, people were incapable of sending a man to the moon, but that they were capable of staging the whole thing in a TV studio. In fact, the opposite is true. By the late 1960s, they did have the technical ability, not to mention the requisite madness, to send three guys to the moon and back. They did not have the technology to fake it on video. Now, please understand, I'm not saying this to defend the honor of the United States. The U.S. government lies all the time about all kinds of things, and if they haven't lied to you today, Maybe they haven't had coffee yet. Hey, let me pause this real quick. Did I agree with everything J.P. Sears said? No. Do you think I agree with everything J- that Collins is saying? Yes. No. <laughs> no, it's yes. not. Okay. Yes. I'm not showing both of these videos to you because I think everything that they've said is true. We're comparing and contrasting them, and especially on something that is controversial, and, and it's kind of crazy to me to think, but it is controversial. There's a lot of people today, not just in the United States, but even in England and other countries that don't think the moon landing happened, that people will have different opinions, okay? So that's just a, let me put that out there.
So it's easy to believe the Apollo program was a lie too, especially if you weren't alive then, and uh, if you don't know much about the technology profiles of the day. You see, the later you were born, the more all-powerful movie magic seems. Uh, nowadays, it would be very easy to fake a moon landing, and you seem to have forgotten how to do it for real. Now, back then, it was the other way around, really. <laughs> Ever since the 1920s, engineers were trying to improve liquid fuel rockets and their guidance systems. They wanted to go to outer space. The people who were paying for it wanted better bombs. That's Werner von Braun, by the way. By 1943, Werner von Braun's people already had a fully functional suborbital rocket called the Aggregate Fear, later known as the V2. After the war, the German rocket scientists went to work for two rival superpowers who then went to insane lengths to outdo each other on the world stage. It's fair to say that technology growth in the Cold War was mostly a competition in aerospace, rocketry, and weapon science. That was the kind of engineering people strove to excel in. And by the mid-60s, limited space travel was a possibility, I think. Meanwhile, film technology had gotten wider and television was still busy trying to be in color. Now, here's where the stories diverge. Um, in one version, the Americans waste $20 billion to send three guys to the moon, uh, plant the plaque that says we came in peace for all mankind, and then go home to bomb Cambodia. Uh, in the more tantalizing version, NASA at some point realizes they just can't. So to avoid humiliation, they hire Stanley Kubrick to produce and direct the moon landing telecasts. You know, he did such a great job with 2001. And who has seen 2001 A Space Odyssey? Has anybody watched it before? Drew has. What do you think of it, Shrew? I thought it was good. Uh huh. Com compared, if you watch this and though you compare it to Infinity Wars, what do you think you're going to think? Um, yeah. Because this is the very dawn of special effects. But uh, the other movie by J.P. Sears talked about this guy, Stanley Kubrick. Uh, Stanley Kubrick was a director. And what were the movies that he got famous for? Shining. Shining, which am I recommending that you watch that? Yeah. No, I am not, okay? Maybe when you're in high school or college. I personally don't like horror films. I'm definitely not recommending you watch an R movie. But 2001 A Space Odyssey was before Star Wars. It was before Star Trek. It was, I think, even before Flash Gordon. Maybe Flash Gordon was, fast, was earlier. But this was a big deal, and people were like, oh, my gosh. Stanley Kubrick is a magician. He just have, like, the first ever... Uh... Basically for space, maybe not the first, but it was a it was one of the first big ones that really captured people's attention. What was, what was the original Star Wars? Movie? Star Wars came out in 1976. I was, or sorry, 77. I was seven years old. So they they did those by actually editing film, and that's a great question because lightsaber effects and laser effects. Um, anyway, and but they didn't really have green screen then, Muhammad. No, 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 no. It was it was earlier. I want to say it was in the it, it had to be in the sixties because when when did we land on the moon? It was a year before I was born. I was born in close. I was born in seventy, so sixty nine. So July of sixty nine is when we landed on the moon. This this came out before that. Okay, so we watched three minutes. We got about four minutes to go. Years later, once the Apollo astronauts are starting to collect Medicare. Some people get a lot of attention by pointing out flaws in the photographic evidence from Apollo. When you listen to them, they seem not to know very much about photography or video or lighting or even perspective. And I think they're hoping you don't either. So we should have seen stars in the sky? No, we shouldn't. The camera was set to expose for broad daylight. If they were exposing for stars, then this picture would have looked more like this. Hmm, flags waving in the breeze? No, it isn't. It's wiggling in the vacuum after they let it go. And the shadows diverge unrealistically across the landscape? No, they don't. Go outside sometime and see how shadows work. They obviously used multiple light sources in this picture, right? No, they obviously didn't. Uh, I've been shooting in the studio for about 30 years now. I know what to look for. When you shine two lights at something, you get two shadows. So this would have looked more like this. But it doesn't. 
because this stuff was shot with a single light source. And if that light was anywhere near the action, you would have seen a fall off in brightness across the terrain. You don't, because the light source was 150 million kilometers away, too far away for the inverse square law to make a difference. Get it? Etc. Etc. Blah, blah, blah. The thing is, all these discussions are ignoring one simple point. In 1969, it was not yet possible, technically, to fake what we saw on TV. Okay, before we get into these details, let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff that we've drawn. Uh, let's see, I drew a video camera, and I, I said fake on video. I tried to draw some stars in a screen. What happens if I try, like right now we've got the lights off, but that window's open. If I want to take a picture of Warren, and I have this bright, um, window right behind him, how is he going to look if I'm having the lake and the trees and everything like that properly exposed? Have you guys ever tried to do that before? Oh, you're It'll be darker. That's exactly right, because it depends on what you're exposing. So he said that, right? They were not exposing for the stars, they were exposing for the front. Um, I wrote all powerful tech, not omnipotent. Who wants to tell me something that they got on their sketch note? We won't have you actually share I the screen. All right. And did you guys notice in, in the picture, what was on the top of the flag to make it stand out? Uh, a pole. A pole, right. Right. So that was one of the things that J.P. Sears talks about, flags flying in the breeze. Okay, what else do we have? Reese, what's something you put on? Um, I put 1969, J. West, um, 2 billion to go to the moon, and then I drew uh, the, and I drew the flag, and I said, Wiggling. Okay. And then I have a picture of like some of the balls and like shadows going different ways. Okay. And then I said that's how shadow works. That's shadow. how shadow works because he's talking again from the perspective of what's his job? What's his expertise? Mm -hmm. A filmmaker. I wrote no fall off in the shadows, and so I think that is really interesting. And and if you do go out, go outside today when we're on break or or at lunch or whatever, and look at how the shadows do work at different times of the day. Of course, the shadows look different. Um, but yeah, that's an important point that he's making. All right, Ben, what's one thing you put on yours? Not enough technology. Not enough technology. Okay, he's going to go into that in some more detail in this next two and a half minutes. Why are people missing this? I think maybe they forget how primitive video was in 1969. I mean, it was an amazing achievement in electronics, but there was a lot they couldn't do. Uh, let me try to explain that. <laughs> The pivotal claim for the Apollo hoax theory, without which it all falls apart, is that what we saw on TV was slow motion footage of astronauts running around in a film studio. Because if it wasn't slow motion, it couldn't have happened on Earth, right? Let's talk about how slow motion works in film and video. There are two ways to make motion slow. One is you shoot it at normal speed and play it back slow. The other is you shoot it fast and play it back normal. The second way is called overcranking. It looks smoother and more realistic because you're sampling natural motion at a higher frame rate. But that means we would have had to shoot it on film using high-speed film cameras, right? Why? Uh, because in 1969 there were no high-speed video cameras yet. The electronics just weren't there. Some people did have a magnetic disc recorder that could capture normal speed video and play it back slow. They used it for sports replays. It could record up to 30 seconds. Play back at uh, 10 FPS and you've got a whopping 90 seconds of slow mo. Okay, let me just pause here. Why do people walking on the moon look like that? Because of gravity. So what's the comparison? Have you heard that between moon's gravity and Earth's gravity? A lot weaker. Do you know about how much? More than half is less than half? Right. I think it's about a sixth, one sixth of the Earth's gravity. So that's why he's saying in order to make these kinds of videos, you would have to do some kind of special effect. Um, and so he's going to talk about why it would have been impossible at that time to do as long of a video as this thing was. How long did they do the live stream? Have, has, he hasn't talked about that yet, has he? No. We usually see video clips, right? He's going to talk about that because this thing went on for a long time. 
One more minute. Let's give you a 10 frames per second because that was the video frame rate for Apollo 11. They had a non-interlaced slow scan TV camera, especially made for them by Westinghouse. Uh, all the later missions were using regular NTSC cameras running at 29.97 FPS. That would be three times harder to fake. I'm trying to make this easy. Keep in mind that when people today watch documentaries about the Apollo missions, they're looking at the highlights. They're looking at, you know, short clips cut together. And short clips are much easier to fake. But in July 1969, 600 million people, including me, were all staring at a continuous lunar telecast that went on for a long time. It's actually pretty boring sometimes. Um, at 16 minutes into the EVA, they turn on the video camera. Four minutes later, you get your one small step in. Then Aldrin climbs out, and they move the camera onto a tripod and proceed to do all their moonwalking, flag planting, photo snapping, and rock picking. Then Armstrong climbs back up into the lander, and it's over. Um, by which time the video camera has been running for 143 minutes. So if we're faking this with electronic slow-mo at one-third speed, we only need to record about 47 minutes of continuous live-action video. Well, that's a lot more than that Ampex disc recorder could hold. But NASA is special. Maybe they have a big disc recorder, right, in 1969. Okay, how much bigger? 95 times bigger? I don't know, man. I mean, government agencies are powerful, but they're not God. Then again, they are NASA. Maybe they did have some special way to overcrank video in 1969. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. So we just actually went to the eight-minute mark of this video. we got about five minutes left, which we're going to watch next time. So let's have a couple of... Would anybody be willing to share their screen and just show us a couple of the things that they've drawn. Yep, go ahead, go for it, Reese. We've got, we've got about, yep, cast and choose MD or Dr. Fryer, yeah. It says MD oh, yeah, okay. yeah. All right, awesome. Okay, so tell us a couple things you haven't mentioned yet that you drew. So at the top, I have um, moon post, not, and I wrote the date, my name, and then he says video was by. Um, over here, I the stars aren't there, but the type of light. Right, that has to do with the exposure, right? Because cameras capture a lot, but it's really hard to capture both light and dark at the same time. Okay, what else? Um, over here, I put they couldn't fill it. It would be too hard to make it. It would make it really hard. Okay, and let me give let's give a detail there. Did anybody else pick it up? How long did they say that actual first uh, broadcast was of the camera being on? 143 minutes, I think. Okay. So again, we tend to think technology is just this all powerful thing, and yes, it's gotten a lot better. Okay, what do you what do you have about high speed there? What was that? You're zoomed out to, you're, you're, you're at 10%. Oh, here. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, no high-speed cameras. Yep. So, like, how do cameras work? And, just, and he gets into the weeds with the, with the technology with that, right? Yeah, I got kind of confused. Right. So that's, like, but that's a good summary. There weren't high-speed cameras. He says there's two ways to do slow motion. You can either play it back slow, or you can shoot it fast. And they didn't have high-speed cameras there, so. Yeah, what was the 47? Did anybody catch that? It's something that they would have to shoot. I think it was more than 47. The good news is we could go back and take a look at that if we wanted to hear that, that part again. But it was that they would have had to have really, and I think I'll show that a little bit later, how big were the film rolls. Have you guys ever seen a film projector? I should have one in our classroom. Um, there's a place here in Oklahoma City that sells old cassette players and old video arcade or like, you know, home video games with cartridges and stuff like that. But I should I should um, show you guys a film projector because I don't know if you've seen one. But what he's talking about is film that literally has to go through the through the projector. Okay. Um, would one more person be willing to share? Ishal? Go ahead. Yep, go ahead and cast. Thank you, Reese.
And remember, guys, this is a good time to add some color, add some other details to your sketch note. What, remind us what happens when we're watching a video and we're sketch noting, and we're really getting into this drawing. What is actually the best thing to do at that moment, rather than just keep working on that drawing? Uh, Cap? Say that again? Yeah, you, you want to move on, move with the speaker. You want to stay with the speaker so that you can um, not get behind. Okay, there we go. All right. I have the date at the top and then my name and stuff. Right. And then I did 1919 Disney Animals and I did technology. Right. And then I drew like a rocket ship and then I couldn't do it. Okay. And then I did a fake a video thing. And then on this, I wrote not possible. Not explosion for the stars, yeah. Okay. And then I just drew a picture. <laughs> All right. Yes. So SD Collins is this filmmaker. Yep. Who is who is our source? Okay. So let me do this. Um, if you would like now to open up your script, okay, so flip over to Chrome, go over to Google Classroom, and open up your script. We're not recording this today. In fact, we're not finishing this today. We're going to continue next time. But you can start filling in the yellow boxes here, putting some ideas from your sketch note. And part three, investigate the source, is what I'm going to show you this video. And this is a video. Um, which actually, I'll, 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 I'm interested in what you think. Is this an example of lateral reading or not? Um, there is, when you go to, to, to Collins's page, does anybody know what Patreon is? You heard of Patreon before? Katie's not her head. Patreon, what does Patreon let people who create stuff get, uh, Katie? Money, yeah. Yeah, you can make donations. So he has a page where people can become a, a Patreon. He has 29 people that are supporting him. And so this is a video. Is this lateral reading actually? Mm, kind of because it's on a different website, but who probably made the video on his Patreon page? Yeah, he made it himself. Okay, here's what he's been doing to describe himself. Hi, my name is Colin. I live in Amsterdam now for 15 years. Uh, before that, I was in Boston. My production company is called Postwar Media. Things I do. I'm basically a small scale filmmaker. I uh, write, direct, and design short films, sometimes for other people, sometimes for me and you. I make uh, video essays on subjects where I feel like I have something to say. I make music videos for artists I like. I make short dramatic films with help from my friends. And uh, sometimes I make food movies for restaurants I like. So let's pause here. So technically, this isn't somebody else talking about him. He's talking about himself. But what? how is this important for us investigating him as a source? Let's go back to J.P. Sears. What do we know about J.P. Sears? He's a comedian. He's a comedian? Where does he make his money, or at least some of it? He makes YouTube. it on YouTube. On YouTube. Basically as, making fun of people. A lot of times. And he even talks about satire and comedy. Um, how is this information about Collins important to our conversation about the moon landing? He appears to be a serious filmmaker, and he's also talking about like all this stuff we just talked about, shooting stuff in slow motion, how much playback, the kinds of technology. Okay, we have a pretty good idea that he's legitimate. He's legit, right? Um, and so if somebody appears to be an expert and have expertise in that field, do we have any hints at all that, that J.P. Sears had expertise in NASA or the moon or science? No. Not really. Um, and when we investigate a little bit more, we really didn't have anything else that helped us know, oh, okay, this is, this is a believable person on this topic. This is an important thing. Just because, like, do I, am I actually named Dr. Fryer now? Can you call me that legitimately? Yeah. Yeah, yeah because I have a PhD. Does that make me an expert in everything? No. no, it doesn't. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Mom. But no, it actually doesn't. Am I, am I a medical doctor? No. no, I'm not. I didn't go to medical school. There's different kinds of doctors. So just because you have, you're an expert, you have knowledge in this one area, that doesn't make you an expert in every area. 
And this is part of what we want to think about in investigating the source. When you're investigating a source, you need to think about, does this person have knowledge and expertise in this area, okay? Because people can have opinions about all kinds of stuff. You know, I give you opinions about food and, and all that, but I don't necessarily have my academic background and my preparation in that. So you would regard me as a source differently. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Um, let me see. Let me, go, let me just go ahead and give you guys a little bit more time to work on your script. You have two minutes. Yep. And so put in some ideas here for your sketch note, and you guys can put some things about Colin. Okay, if you want to start filling out part four, you can as well. We're gonna we'll finish watching the rest of this video next time. Your assignment after this video is going to be making your own. So what I'm gonna be do? Have you guys used Adobe Spark video yet? We used it last year, I think, to like tell funny and kind of silly stories. Yeah, we're gonna use that again, but this time you're gonna make a video about the moon landing and about some of these things that we've learned, okay? But it's going to be your own video. But this is just going to be a narration of your sketch note. Did anybody um, draw on paper? Did everybody make a digital sketch note today? What's a good idea to do it with your sketch note today? Even though you're not done with it, how can you sort of take out an insurance policy that, oh, if I have to power wash, I'm not going to lose it? That's right. Sharu Muhammad are on the right track. Save, save it, okay? Save it to Google Drive, okay? All right. Thank you all so much. Have a great break, and we will finish this up next time.